Hey everyone, this is Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church. Welcome to another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Hope everyone is doing well, and as we always like to say, that you, most of all, that you're saved and you're walking in the will of God. Amen. Uh, no greater thing that you can possess as, <laughs> than, than salvation. Amen. That's the greatest prize, greatest possession. Amen you can have in this world and no greater path than salvation amen many paths that's, that you can take many paths you can walk and take in this world amen but uh you know so sorry <laughs> uh not all paths uh lead to eternal life not all paths not all not all uh gods are the same amen a lot of people want to say oh you know this path you know all paths Oh, you know, the, 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 all the gods that are worshipped are basically the same God. I'm afraid I don't have to disagree with you there. Only one God in, in heaven, amen, that's sitting on the throne, amen. And that's, that's Yahweh, amen, Jehovah, amen. And uh, the, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And we have to be born again, amen. We have to get saved, amen. That's the salvation that we're talking about, amen. It's grace through faith, amen. And uh, it says, you must be born again. Amen. And uh, he's the door to the sheep, folks. And no man comes to the Father except by him. Amen. Through him. It said, anyone comes up a different way, tries to come up a different way. It said, the same as a thief and a robber. Amen. So, <laughs> today you say that. Oh, boy, that, that stirs something up in people. So there's a lot of anger up in people, but... Uh, the word of God is the truth. Amen. Well, brother, there's a lot of people that have a lot of, that have other holy texts and books and stuff like that. Yeah, I know that. I've seen them and re even read through some of them and everything. But the word of God is different. It is alive. Amen. Because who it speaks of and who it is was once alive and walked among us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld, amen, his glory, amen, that's the only begotten son, God, amen, that's what the book of John says, Whew, hallelujah, thank the Lord, amen, but it is alive, it's still alive, amen, when you read it and through the spirit, amen, it makes you alive, amen, and the Bible talks about it, it says, we're supposed to be lively people, amen, and uh, that doesn't mean, <laughs> Okay. That doesn't mean all the time that you are just flipping and turning cartwheels and jumping up and down and shouting and everything like that. But when you talk about it, amen, and the spirit gets a hold of you and that spirit is inside of you, amen, and it bubbles up, amen, and when you're talking about salvation and what you have inside of you and what you're going to have on the next side of eternity, amen, it makes you excited. All the enemy come against you, try to depress and oppress, deep and you know can't possess you. I mean, I know there's contention about that. You know, people, oh yeah, you even, if, even though you're saved, you can still be possessed. Listen, if you're saved, you got the spirit of God in you. Amen. There's not room for another spirit, the spirit of the enemy, to come in and possess you. Yes, it can. Uh, depress, oppress you, and try to guide you in a different way externally. The Spirit of God, amen, lives inside of you, amen. Now, unless you do something for his Spirit to depart, and that can happen. So, brother, he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. That's right, and he'll go. He will, and he'll go with you all the way to the end. But if you reject him, 
spirit will depart. Amen. That leaves room for the enemy to come in. Amen. And you have to come to repentance. Amen. That's what the word of God talks about. You must come to repentance. Amen. There's going to be no sin at all. It's going to enter heaven. Say, well, brother, the blood takes care of that. It absolutely does. Amen. But you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to come to that altar of repentance, wherever that altar is. I'm in this room right now, and I've got this computer on the table, and this could be the altar if I needed it. I can kneel down anywhere and ask the Lord for forgiveness. I should do something. And brother, that seems like an awful easy thing to do. It's the way God made it. That's the way God wants to do it, amen? The grace, amen? The, the, the law, amen? It, could, it held things that we could not hold to, that we could not accomplish. That way, because the Lord Jesus, he fulfilled the law for it. He said he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets, amen? He didn't come to destroy. He said he came to fulfill. He kept the law for us, amen? And by us, accepting him as our Lord and Savior, amen? And by grace through faith, accepting his sacrifice for us, and we're saved, amen, walking in his will daily, amen, keeping contact with the Father, amen, our, our Father in heaven, trusting in him, keeping the doctrine of Christ, amen, at our very core, standing on it, the commandments of Christ, amen, we are still fulfilling the law, amen. You no, know, people say, you know, oh, you're trying to do away with the law and everything like that, trying, that it's not good and that it's evil. No, no, by no means. It's, that's not, I, 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 couldn't, I could, can't believe anybody would say that the, the Old Testament and the laws of God and everything are evil. No, that's not it. We still hold to the Ten Commandments, but see, if we hold to the doctrine of Christ, we're fulfilling the law of God. Amen. That's what he said. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. Amen. No, it was the schoolmaster that brought us to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Thank the Lord. But very beliefs, so many, oh my goodness, so many that would have time to go through and talk and mention every single one that's going on. And, and if, you, if any, a lot of you do the research and look into some of these things, Lord help us. We are in a time of so many varied beliefs and paths and different churches and as I mentioned so many different times and it's and it's really a shame and it's really a blight. Let's be honest. It's a blight. A strike or something against us being Christians that we go, that we drive past maybe on our way to our church. We'll say that. I'm not just saying not our church. I'm saying your church, all of our church, on on our way to our our uh, the, our church that we go to. That each small road you go by, there's a sign there pointing to a different church, a different denomination. Each road you go by, even on the other side of the road, different churches on each one, because we couldn't worship together. Man, wouldn't you like it if we could all let down those walls and just come and worship together? If we could get the main thing down, the main thing, you know, by grace, through faith, you're saved, amen. Just getting the word of God and just come together and lift God up and praise and worship and recognize him for who he is and how he's blessed and but you know we've got to go by the word of God the strict word of God and as we talked about I did in the last video the, the how we have let down in the word of God amen how we've let down in recent times and how it's accelerating fast 
you know it's continual acceleration seems like instead of it's went you know accelerating down from like 30 years almost down to within you know then you know to 10 years now in five years and it just it, it's keep going faster and faster amen letting down the word of God and what it means and the changing and everything and say well it doesn't actually mean this anymore it actually means this and we don't have changing words and everything like that to suit our own ways and lusts and the ways of the flesh people we should be ashamed of ourselves trying to change the word though as of oh, many times amen no true statement not because I said it but because I believe this is what it, the word of God must change us amen and we must adhere to it and what it says we should not even dare to change it to fit what we want amen God help us be in true we're trouble <laughs> people we're in trouble amen what does the book of revelation say about taking out and putting in change changing it amen we add to or take away it talks about the curses being added to us so brother that's just talking about revelation if you want to look at it that way then that's fine i tell you what i'm going to take it to mean any part of the word of god don't take away don't add to it nothing take it as it says it don't say, well, it actually means this. i tell you what. In fact, I was going to say this when we get into this. If you want to say, okay, I believe it might mean this. Or I want to speculate that it can mean this. If you want to do that, that's fine. Just say, you read it, you study it, and see what you come out with. Okay, that's fine. Part of the teaching, part of getting into it, and the Word of God, and that's fun because that'll that'll spurn you and I to get into it more and read about it and think about certain things, and that helps the Word of God flow and the Spirit of God to work in you and work in your mind and God to to open up your mind to certain things. Amen. I got no problem with that. I mean, just as long as you're not reading something that's that's far out in left field that totally goes against what it says. I've seen people preach and they'll say, "Okay, I, 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 I it, this this says this," and he said, "I and and and, and read it," and he said, I, "And I imagine it this way." He said, "It doesn't say this, but he said I picture it this way." So you know, take it take it you know you can take it or leave it. You know, just imagine it this way or you know whatever I, I got problem with that I got no problem with that you know but when people start preaching these doctrines doctrines of devils brought on by what seducing spirits what it says well it doesn't say bring it on but it talks doctrines of devils and, and talks about the seducing spirits but it does I believe that's what it's pointing toward that the doctrines of devils that that gets brought in by those seducing spirits amen but we're accelerating faster and faster into these things amen into the lies are getting in the church amen one of the things I forwarded on Facebook or something like that talked about what I've been <laughs> what I've been harping about <laughs> I guess people think you just it's like a, you're like a, on some things you're just like a broken record good because I want to hammer it in and some some people's head not just I'm not thinking about certain people I'm just saying in, gen, in general and people's heads on some of these things one of them was about the the devil not trying and destroying the church or couldn't destroy it but he has been successful infiltrating it Amen. And I've been saying that for I don't know how long. <laughs> but he has. And he's done it. He's continuing to do it. Amen. Seeing it. You've seen it. And if you know, many of you out there, you know the word of God. You can look person, see and and just know what spirit 
that they're of and what they speak. Gotta be have got the spirit of discernment. I mean, amen. And that's sorely lacking in the church of today. We need that back so bad. And that's one thing that the enemy has tried to push back, tried to snuff out. Why? Because you have the discernment, amen, he can come in. If he covers that up, amen, if he deadens that, amen, and people, he can come in and he's not going to be found out come in and slither about <laughs> just like like he does you know go wherever he likes whisper in the ears of the people turn people one against the other turn the one side against the other turn both sides against the pastor do whatever he wants when we need to gain that discernment back it's not left us it's just been deadened to things amen and most of all be strong in the Lord in the power of his might because it's not going to get any easier remember the enemy what I've said he's just things of the past he's fell back he's rewrapped things and brought forth those rewrapped things to make it look different Still the same things, still the things that he's trying to bring upon the church world, amen, and trying to fool us with, but it's just in a different phase, a different look, amen. So that's why I say, and I still say, and I will continue to say it. We as Christians, amen, we have to be on the cutting edge of things, of, th of things going on, in this world and of course on the spiritual side of things most of all and that's first and foremost because we know things going on, on the spiritual side will manifest going into the natural side amen so we have to work on that amen so let me exhort you right now work on that pray amen that your discernment amen grow in strength amen you can spot the devices of them. Because the Bible said we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices, of his his trip lines, I mean, that you, you know, trip and fall down and, you know, remember the old enemy trip lines and everything. You trip it and two bombs go off, amen. I want to get right quick and just maybe this tie some stuff in here and this is not going to be what time is it we got some time but but this may go on into another video because I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling it today <laughs> oh Lord help us Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and I'm going to I think I'll start at verse 9 some familiar scripture but it's what I'm talking about about moving him, falling back, repackaging. Right? Now, and I'm going to say this in certain things, as we said before, I'm going to be speculative. Now, I have some evidence, but I want you, you the listeners, to be, and some of you may think the same way. I've talked to some people that you believe the same thing. And others that I've talked to that have that are in the know that have done research written books so forth so on but I'll say this I, I, we'll get there okay <laughs> just gotta do the right way anyway but first and foremost I want we have to get a lay the groundwork amen have to be strong the Lord the power of his might amen we need to be now, and, and now like who, who was it was preaching 
I think it was Brother Kenny talking about saying there's there's no you know there's not demons behind every rock and everything no but in the ministry of spiritual warfare I got to be watching if you are you got to be watching because like we said if our discernment is being deadened is, is being blunted then we're not seeing all that's going on and I want to see I want to see all that's going on amen I do not want to be fooled I do not want to be blinded to what the enemy has done what he's doing what's he, what he's going to do now we have a great advantage because the Word of God tells us a lot amen but not some of the specifics the Word of God places the spirit you know, well the word of, uh, the Spirit of God and the word is in us amen to use through the Spirit of God, amen, through the Holy Ghost, amen. So, a lot of it is our responsibility as well. Different ministries, amen. Different workings of the Spirit, amen. So anyway, Ecclesiastes, going all the way back to the Old Testament. Hmm, excuse me. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Now here's where we're going to get, say some statements that are going to be a little bit speculative so once again you take it as that and I want you to do the research oh boy and I'm hearing thunder off in the distance it was thundering and lightning this morning and the, and the power flashed on and off so a couple of times so <laughs> we hope maybe we can get the video done before that happens so Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 it says the thing that hath been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun you can apply this to quite a few things now I've seen commentaries and I've seen people write you know uh, older commentaries to modern commentaries what do I think of commentaries there's I, I do have a Bible that I agree quite a bit with a lot of the commentaries but that's according to what I believe okay they're again being speculative in a lot of things now lots more of these modern commentaries and some of the old ones I don't kind of hold with but they are man's commentaries okay so but anyway make this statement here you know Solomon wrote these wisest man he was there in that time amen but let's go back a little bit to what was going on I, now I'm one of these now let's be let's go this let's, this steps over a little bit into speculation I'm one of these that believes that there was more things going on before the flood than than we understand or know about so, brother, why was not a lot of it written in the Bible? Some of it was. Genesis 6, where it talks about the sons of God and the giants and all that. And there are other other documents, other material, other things that talk about this. And other scholars have found out and everything. Uh, what more? We'll, we'll get into that in a, probably in, in another video, but there again that's me that's a hypothesis this is, this is what my personal belief from what I've studied from what I've heard and everything so bro it's not it's not if it's not written down but not but you don't understand not everything is written down in the Word of God it didn't have to be because you know there again you know there was didn't have there was no reason to have written it down if God just said, you know, just, you know, write down, this is what I want you to write down. We're to seek out the truth, to seek out all the other things. But anyway, there was more going on before the flood than we understand, than we think, than we can imagine, okay? It was more advanced more so why did Noah build this boat and 
you know, made it out of wood and all this and stuff like that. That's because God appointed, that's how God told him to do it. Now, there are reasons for that, okay? Because I want to go back to the days of Jared up to the days of Noah. And we got to understand, too, you know, Jesus even said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming the days of the Son of Man. Amen. So it wasn't just man that we're talking about. It. It's that There was a reason for the flood to come. Amen. Just to destroy, destroy all the sin and everything. And God, he said, it grieved him that he created man and everything and all that was going on. And there was a ma some major stuff going on. So he said, do your own research. Look into that. So we'll go into it more. I'm just trying to lay some groundwork here. We're talking about. But verse 10 it says, Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath already of old time, which was before us. I'm one of these that looks instead of a narrow scope of saying, Oh, okay, well, this is going to... I'm more of a wide scope. I look into these things. So, seeing and believe as it through kind of revelation of different ways and different things, see more things that went on and reasons of why that the earth, now of course people are going to say, it's just local flood. It was just local flood. Well, you know, bones and, you know, shells and everything have been found on the top of like some of the mount, you know, the mount like the Himalayas and stuff like that. So, I'm one of these that believes there again, my personal belief, believe that it was a worldwide flood, okay? To destroy everything because <laughs> the wickedness of man talks about the wickedness of man. I said, but why didn't it tell us everything? Because uh, this is what God wanted us to know about this. Didn't go into specific details about every single thing. Look what all is going on in, in, in the world now. It, it tells us just what's happening. It doesn't go into certain specific details about every single thing that's going on. It just kind of gives a covering of what's going on. Saying, okay, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, but it doesn't give every single detail about what's going on. I'm not, and I'm not saying the word of God's not complete. That's not what I'm saying. Verse 11, it says, There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come, which those that shall come after. Amen. We can, <laughs> we can attest that in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. That's one thing about people talking about saying, Oh, you know, <laughs> people looking down and, Oh, and, so and so is looking down on us from heaven and everything, and um, that I do not believe. It would not be heaven if you're up there looking down, worrying about your son, your daughter, your grandchildren, if they're going to be saved or not. That wouldn't be heaven. You'd be worrying. Amen. That's <laughs> that's a t that's another different thing right there. Amen. Uh, but. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I want to move on. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get caught caught up in that because that might <laughs> that might lead us down a different rabbit trail, and I don't want. I don't want to do that right now. So, in, in covering all that, laying the groundwork. There again, my thoughts. Me being speculative. I think there was a lot more because of certain reasons and we'll go into more I'm just in another video I'm trying to like see lay the ground that there was more going on before the flood than than we're told and a lot of that was one of the some one of the largest reasons and it was not just because the entire population of the earth had become sodomites 
that was not just that was not a reason. Uh, 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 that was certainly part of the problem, no doubt. But some of the reason why it was destroyed happened once again after the flood. One of them was the giants came back after the flood as well. And that initiative, let me go ahead and put this, because I don't know if I'll remember later, that initiative is going on once again today. Part of the enemy, what I say earlier, part of the enemy rewrapping what he had going on before and re, re, repackaging, rewrapping, and letting it go once again today. Why? What we've been talking about in the last two or three videos. Deception. Deception. Great deception. Jesus talked about deception. Be not deceived. Let no man deceive you. Talked about the great deception in the end coming. Amen. Now let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk with Solomon for a minute. Amen. Talk about wisdom. Amen. Now, I know the Word of God has all that you need, amen? Has wisdom and knowledge, amen, for you too. Has all the wisdom, the knowledge, the spiritual understanding that you need, amen, for this life for you. And it shows you the road map, amen, to get you to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace through faith, through the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and get you to where you, to know God, amen. <coughs> Excuse me. It also talks about having wisdom and how carefully, how carefully you need to be with that wisdom. Before we go into that, I want to go to No Solomon gains the wisdom before I want to for Ecclesiastes and talking about it, I want to go turn to 1 Kings 11 and 1. Now this is what happened to poor old Solomon. <laughs> I shouldn't say poor old Solomon, man. He was the smartest person back then. He had all the riches and everything. My goodness. And he was the king, wasn't he? What am I saying poor old Solomon for? Because he ended up having problems chosen to God and he chose the right thing amen chose the wisdom to rule the people of God amen and God said I'll give you the rest of these things but see what happens first Kings 11 1 it says but King Solomon uh oh loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, or Edomites rather, the Zidonians, and the Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord saith unto the children of Israel, and this was one of the, one of the statutes, he said, he said, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come uh, in unto you. Don't have anything to do with them. Leave them alone. Why? Well, we'll see in a minute. He said, For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Boom. Solomon clave unto these in love. So he had many wives, many concubines. Well, let's, let's read. And he had, said, And he had, listen, check this out. And he had 700 wives princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart uh oh it said for and for it came to pass when solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods finally when he got old he weakened in his faith said and his heart was not perfect with the lord his god as was the heart of David his father. It said for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, 
the abomination of the Ammonites. Ashtoreth, just by the way, has a little bit to do with, uh, I, I, I believe I remember this correctly, so somebody correct me wrong, uh, I think is another name for Ishtar, which has a little bit to do uh, with uh, Easter. Easter, Ishtar, Ashtoreth, by the way. Uh, guys know about that. So during the week of Easter, Easter has nothing to do. It may aggravate some people. Easter has Easter has nothing to do with Christ and His resurrection. Now, if the Passover does, Amen. Easter was celebrated and has to do with other things and has nothing to do with Christ, Amen. That was a pagan holiday that was celebrated. For Ishtar or Easter before uh, had you know before Christ was even on the scene, it was a pagan holiday. Okay, I'm not going to get into all that because <laughs> believe me, you, you get pounded, <laughs> you get hit hit pretty hard when you start talking about that. Because people, that's a just a that's a man's tradition. So. But anyway, no, I'm not going to shy away from. Him. I'm still going. To, I'm still going to talk about and tell the truth. So, so, so there you have it. <laughs> but so, so Psalm went after Asherus, the goddess of Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Now he was wiser. He was wiser than David, and had all that. But he failed said so went not fully after the Lord as his father did as David did but he went farther than that he added two more to the list said so then did Solomon build a high place for Shemosh the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem and for uh oh one of the ones that I particularly don't care for none of them really but for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon they like to sacrifice children to Molech in a very very uh, horrible way we've talked about that before yeah uh, that's when it talks about putting your children put or putting the children through the fire that's what they did for the god Molech so in verse 8 it says, Likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Look how many wives and concubines and princesses and everything. So this just mentions the ones that it mentions other places in the Bible. So how many more from these other lands did he do? So just to placate or just to please them he did all that for them so the Lord was angry the Lord was angry with some because his heart was turned from the Lord of God of Israel which had appeared unto him twice Well, I'm going down to first verse thirteen. Said, "How be it? I will not rend away." So, I'm just saying this. God, God talked to him. He had a took took him mind to shed a little bit. As the old saying goes, but in verse thirteen, he said, "How be it?" I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. But what happened, he said in verse 14, he said, And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, 
he was the king's seed in Edom. So see that what happens when Israel decide they're not going to follow God anymore and do something like this. God will raise up another nation, another country or something to suppress Israel, to take over Israel, put them under their enemies for a time, amen. Because they wouldn't serve God, amen. But this is what happens when you decide you're going to worship strange gods. And as we know, Paul said, talking about giving sacrifice unto devils, unto idols. And he talks about behind these idols are demons. He recognized the fact, amen. Now, he didn't recognize the fact, too, that some of these idols were just that. They were just stone or, or clay or whatever or wood or something like that. But he also recognized that in some of these cases, some of these idols actually had spiritual entities behind them. Remember Ephesians 6, spiritual warfare? Read it. Know it. It's where you get talks about the armor of God, but also the spiritual enemies that are behind these things. When he first started out, Ecclesiastes 1.12 said, I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. And remember, we're just getting the base for all this stuff here. He said, I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sort of veil hath God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. He said, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, he had the wisdom to see all these things. Now, as I, I said this the other night, church, I used to call Ecclesiastes Solomon's book of depression. Because <laughs> everything he said, he said, all, this is this is this, and this is vanity and vexation of spirit. He had the wisdom and knowledge to see all these things, but each one he would, he would say, he's like, yeah, seen this. This is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, maybe he was in a state prison because he had everything. Didn't please him. Didn't make him happy. But he's showing us, he's telling us, amen, that all the wisdom and knowledge and everything of the world and all these other things is not going to make you happy, amen. But also he's showing us that the wisdom and knowledge of different things like all the other things, the spiritual in nature. He said, that which is crooked, verse 13, he said, cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. Now each of us, we should, we should desire to have the wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual. Now I speak about that a lot because we have to, and we should crave the wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding of the Word of God. Amen. Because sometimes you will read, and, and I think a lot of people do this, read a verse maybe 200, 200 times. Throw a number out there. And on the 201st time, God will give you something on that verse that you've never seen before. And then it'll open up into some, so many different things. Just that one little verse, and then boom, it opens up into all these other things. And that's what happens. we got to get in the Word of God and see. And one wonders what all else Solomon knew. Now there's other texts and other books out there that I don't, that you don't mess with amen one in particular and I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna mention, mention the name of it <laughs> talks about Solomon and some of the things that uh, that he was supposed to have done and everything like that and I don't you know if it doesn't line up with with the word of God you toss it I mean that's that's a simple that's that, that's the plumb line right there if it doesn't line up with the word of God plumb line the word of God lines up with it. if it doesn't line up with it, you toss it amen but there's 
things that give you more of an understanding. Amen. Now that saying any one of us is going to be like a new Solomon. You can be in the Word of God, Amen. The from here to the next you know, for the next twenty years in it every single day for eight to you know, twelve hours or whatever, something like that. Oh, you'll grow, grace and all absolute, but you never squeeze all the things out of it, amen. God will definitely bless you, amen. I wish you have time to put to devote that much time in it, amen. But Solomon he had had all of that but he recognized amen that all of that and all the stuff all the knowledge with the wisdom knowledge and spiritual understanding and all that stuff it didn't lead to anything eh? uh, on this side of eternity it was good he was able to judge God's people amen but also I'm going to go back here because that's where we started. Like I said, just base talking about what he what he sighted, what he lighted on right here, and it's interesting. He started talks about this right here, and a lot of people can say and say, "Oh, that just means this. That just means that." Well, you know, come up with your own thoughts and your own hypothesis or speculator, but study it out. Be fully convinced, amen. Nothing new under the sun, amen. That which hath been, which shall be. Speculating to think that Solomon had wisdom and knowledge about things that had went on. Maybe that were still going on, amen. And that's still going on today. Things in the past that if we understood and knew and that's starting to come out that would shock a lot of us that would give us so much more of an understanding of the Word of God now, I'll say this it has me and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm anything special no that's not no way I'm not but it gets me excited because why because I crave more wisdom and knowledge and you should too we all should amen there again, I'm not putting myself above anybody. We're all on the same level. Amen. But I'm doing it from a standpoint, once again, on the area of spiritual warfare. Why? Because it's part of the area of my work in the Lord. Any possible way and there's so many different ways. It's like the bases you got to cover, amen. Like the enemy comes out through so many different ways. It's like you get area here and area here, area here, one here, one here, one here. So many different ways that you've got to look and watch. If you're not careful, in the black song there's so much that it ends up a vexation of spirit because all you're seeing is watching these things and trying to watch for the enemy that your mind gets off of the main thing I'm trying to wrap this up here pointing to a point and get into the other things later on in the other videos what's the main thing salvation Seek and save that which is lost. Amen. And the secondary is to destroy the son of man because he came to destroy the works of the devil. And those are our commissions. Amen. I believe that. And the second one, by doing the first one, you, you are doing the second one as well. But the second one also has other things attached to it as well. You know, as I'm saying, if you help get a soul, if you leave a soul to the uh, help, let me, let me try to say it a different way. <laughs> if you are leading someone to Christ and the Spirit is drawing them, amen, and you pray with them or something like that, 
you are destroying the work of the devil. You destroy helping a person to Christ, you help destroy that hold that the enemy has on them. The Spirit's doing the work, amen. You're just leading them. Maybe in, in prayer, helping, but you've destroyed that work that the enemy has in them, amen. The hold that it has in them. But it's also other things that goes along with destroying the work of the devil. Not giving the devil any <laughs> press <laughs> or any glory or anything because uh, he does not deserve any but as I've said before I want to continue the declaration of war against the side of darkness against the ruler of the darkness of this world against all the things of wickedness amen because that's our duty that's my duty and to do that that is a ministry that especially my at least mine been told saying how they in ministry different and something new so at times <laughs> it's going to seem odd but you know what that's fine I'm kind of out there anyway <laughs> I'm kind of out there anyway and odd so that's perfectly fine with me uh, like I said, now, and uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be cryptic. I'm, I said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just laying the foundation for work because it's time we start bringing more of this stuff out. Because I want people to start keeping their spiritual eyes open. That way, we're going to see what the enemy's doing. If he starts coming in the churches, we're going to be able to start kicking him out. If he starts infiltrating. Our eyes and the spiritual discernment are going to be open. Amen. We can take him out of there. Amen. It does say where good is, evil is also present. So let's turn that around. Where that evil is, let's kick him out of there. Because all he's wanting to do is, is cause confusion. He's wanting to keep people from going to an altar. Amen. To gain forgiveness. To accept Christ. Amen. So let's get him out of there. Amen. Anything that I can bring forth. Amen. To show but let me tell you something. A lot of these things, it becomes a very deep pool. It becomes a rabbit hole, amen. It becomes things that if you open the veil and look through, look through and see, it's going to be stuff that's almost unbelievable to some people. But I believe Solomon, he knew. He stated it right here. The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done shall be, is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. We're still fighting the gods of old, lower G gods. You think they're really gods of old? When you're talking about gods, lower G gods in the Old Testament, just enter, well, you can enter fake gods, false gods, but also you can enter two fallen angels that they worship or demonic spirits. You can slip that in there as well. Doesn't matter what the name is. So, Doing that, we're doing that. They're doing that today too. We're still fighting against them today too. Maybe going under a different name today as well. This is serious stuff, people. All this stuff is going on, and I want you people to be praying. This is something that you are called to do or get into. Or this is something that you feel like the Lord wants you to do. Well, <laughs> then jump in. Because, like I said, this is a very, very outside corner of a ministry. 
Now, that doesn't mean it's not, it's not, uh, uh, what I mean by that, it, it, that it's not, uh, what am I trying to say? It's not one of the ministries that should be at the forefront, but it is one, like I said, that is a deep pool and something that you have to pray about, something that you have to seek the Lord on and be sure because you're going to be ostracized in a lot of cases going to be hated be called extreme in some cases be called a nut but that's okay because doing it is called out by the Lord doing it for the Lord it's his ministry and because we are in the end times according to the word of God. Jesus called it out and the things that he called out we're going through. So if you can make that declaration you can take a stand for the Lord and pray whatever the Lord has for you. And whatever it may be, it may not be this ministry. It may be a different kind of ministry. And let me exhort you right now to whatever ministry the Lord has for you, do it. Step out in faith, out of the comfort zone, comfort box, <laughs> and get in the ministry the Lord wants you to do, whatever that may be. And sometimes it's hard. Something like this, what I'm talking about, bringing it out talking about it sometimes it can be hard it can be difficult because I'll say this it really especially in the churches of today it is kind of a niche ministry and it is one that is a lot of times not well received not well received but I gotta speak it. I've got to talk about it. I've got to bring it to the forefront. I've got to let people know what's going on. So more to follow, more to come. This is just like I said, this the groundwork to bring stuff up. And uh hope I've got you all interested. <laughs> So I've been talking about we needed to do more spiritual warfare ministries and things that are going on in today's world. Like I said, a lot of it talking about it may lose some of you all on it. <clears throat> but I've got to bring it out. Got to talk about it. Got to warn uh, that the enemy, what the enemy's doing. Go back and talk about what he's done, how he's changed things as far as repackaging and bringing back out what he's doing against the churches against the people of God amen uh, and expose amen and let's pray pray hard that our spirit of discernment comes back to the forefront and is sharpened amen and we'll recognize the enemy for what he is amen we must Because I want to recognize once again when the enemy walks through the door. When the enemy comes on, or as I'll say it this way, or when the enemy comes on the scene, I want to have that feeling, I want the spiritual word, and I want that radar to go on, off and know and be able to spiritually attack. Amen. Amen. No, it's been kind of an odd video. This is how I felt ready to go today. It's time. So let's <laughs> let's lace up our boots, our, <laughs> our our fighting boots, and get the sword of the spirit. Amen. Well, let's say let's let's put on let's put on this. Let's keep. We're supposed to have our armor on anyway. So if you haven't put on that armor of God, go to Ephesians six. Read about it. Learn about it. We'll talk. We're going to talk about it. 
and like I said, I talk about it quite a bit. That's Christianity 101. When you got saved, somebody should have discipled you and told you about the spiritual armor of God and what you have and your power with God. So that'll be part of what we talk about as well. Amen. Amen. So that's what we've got for today. And the more to follow, we're going on a little bit of a journey here. We'll talk about certain things. Like I said, a lot of things. <laughs> I hope people's not going to fall out, but we've got to bring it out. The Lord says it's time to bring it out. We've got to bring it out. So we're going to. Anyway, all right, everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. Pray for one another. Lift one another up in prayer. Amen. And, you know, exhort one another. Encourage. Amen. Especially during this time. Amen. When everybody's trying to discourage and everything like that, encourage one another, amen? And uh, pray for the sick and afflicted and uh, most of all the backs and the unsaved that they come to the Lord and come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. And uh, pray for our churches and, you know, pray for just uh, a, a harvest, amen? A time of uh, renewal, revival, amen? And uh, we get ready here to celebrate Resurrection Week, amen? Resurrection Day, amen. So, uh, thankful for that, amen. Thankful for being saved, amen. Thankful, thankful for the, the sacrifice for the Lord Jesus that he gave us, amen. Died for us and arose on that third and appointed day, amen. And now he's seen a many, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession in prayer, amen. And uh, if you really believe that, you accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. And so, this confession is made unto salvation, amen. Confess your sins to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Ask him to save you. Come into your heart and take up a boat there. Amen. And you'll serve him the remainder of your days. Amen. Ask him to save you. Amen. He said that uh, you'll be a new creature in Christ. Amen. A new creation. Amen. He said old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. Praise God. Thank the Lord for that. Right? Praise God. So, guys, take care. And uh, be thankful for the day that we've had. Amen. And uh, we'll be back to a video uh, very soon. Uh, just, just never know with life and everything, but we'll be back as soon as we can. And we'll go from here and uh, keep going with this series and bring out what the Lord wants us to bring out. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, take care. This was Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church, another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Amen. And uh, we will see you in the next uh, video. Oh, check out the description box. Check out those links in there. Very important. Some of the uh, other areas of ministry. Amen. That touches what we've been talking about as well at certain points. So check those out. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Take care. See you later. Bye now.